I have the great pleasure of having my friend Barbara Morrison as a guest on the show today. Barbara is a very well-known animal psychic, and now she's the author of a new book. Uh, Barbara's going to be talking today about the um, intuitive link between animals and human beings. She's had a lot of experience with this, and so in just a few moments we'll start hearing some of these wonderful stories that Barbara has. And she's also going to contact one of my pets during the show. The name of the show is Living Wisdom, and I'm Patty Paul. So Barbara, welcome to the show. Thank you. And one of the things I'd like to find out is how in the world did you ever become an animal psychic? <laughs> uh, what led up to this? Um, actually, I've, I've known all this lifetime that I'm very connected with animals. I understand animals more than I understand people. <laughs> and, and so I've always, um, I've, I've loved that energy and that vibration. And, and in so doing, um, I, I had a traditional life at the beginning with a marriage of 15 years. But after that, I knew there was something more to life. So I went on a quest of, of metaphysics, of learning more about who I was, because it wasn't quite clear, you know, little sign didn't come down and say, animal psychic. <laughs> it became in quite suddenly, mm -hmm. and um, or maybe not as suddenly, but more subtly, as it were. And so I've had many wonderful teachers, such as, as Ophelia and uh, Lazarus yes. and Robert Petro. And um, it came to be a few years ago that I was at a stalemate in my life. And it was told to me, the reason you're here is to be an animal psychic. And it's about time to get busy with your work. Uh -huh. And I had been avoiding it for years and years. It's like, no, 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 not me. I, somebody else could do it better, you know. But I moved forward with that. And the, and the energy just flowed. And the excitement was there. And the thrill was there. And um, through, through a, a trance channel reading with Robert Petro, he so indicated that, that this gift goes back to Egypt. That was for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's moved through many lifetimes. And so it's just something that I do, something actually we all do, but something that um, I probably enjoy doing maybe more than other people mm -hmm. want to slow down to do. And so moving forward with that, I moved into having different animals, one being my beloved Darby, who I'd gotten from England, and, and he had a medical ailment as Darby well. Darby was a dog? He was a whippet, actually. Oh, yes. yes okay. a whippet from England. And about four years into his life, he came down with epilepsy. So I looked for alternatives to, to extend his life, and we did till he was 14. We oh. got past many things with Darby. But this kept moving me on my path, and then, as I said two years ago, it was my life was at a standstill. This is what you're here to do. This is the reason you're here, and this is the reason you signed up this lifetime. And um, and it it was so indicated that I needed to have a book. Uh -huh. And so um, so I moved into the publishing of my book. Mm -hmm. Uh, as long as you're mentioning yeah. it, I know you have a picture of the cover. It's just the, the cover, it'll be released on March 2001. Great. And it's in pre-release right now. I Talk to the Animals is yes. the name of it. So I'll certainly look forward to reading your book. And, and so um, as I started to work with different clients, I realized how easy it is for me. Um, it just comes to me. My guides give me either words or they give me sensations. They maybe show me a picture. Um, I get triggered on, on different things, maybe a combination of both, in order to be doing my work. So it has evolved over time. Mm -hmm. And each time as I do this work, it just gets better. I learn a lot from the animals who are talking to me. And many times I get information that um, people have gone to the best veterinarian schools and they tried to save this cat, mm -hmm. and uh, the cat 
was in excruciating pain and, and so it was a blessing that they put the cat mm -hmm. uh, to, to move it so it could move into a different realm, another energy form. But in the reading I could see that what was going on was it was a brain disease. The brain had actually swollen in the head. Not something they quite identified. But as the owner was telling me, that's right, she said her eyes were bulging. Huh. So it, it sometimes you get these mm -hmm. confirmations on when you didn't know exactly all the details. As I asked my clients not to give me the details, let me start working working into it to see what I get rather than feeding back preconceived ideas. Yes. So that's how it that's how that's my life has evolved as an animal psychic. <laughs> well, you know, just that part of it alone is such a service for a pet owner who loves their animal so much, and the animal is, for whatever reason, uh, you know, sick or obviously uh, in a terminal condition, for the owner to understand that just because the animal is going to die, doesn't mean that is the end of life for that animal. Just as humans exist beyond the physical, so do animals. And I know uh, a few years ago, after my beloved cat, Paca, had passed over, uh, I contacted you to see what you could find out about him mm -hmm. now that he had gone past the veil, as they say. And what you told me was very helpful to me. And it also, uh, one of the things you mentioned that Pat Paca was communicating to you was that the last two weeks of his life, he felt very heavy. Mm. And that was a period where I was so indecisive about having the vet facilitate his passing. I was torn, mm -hmm. should I, shouldn't I? And because I got that feedback, I knew that it would have been a loving thing to help him go more easily sooner. So that was a valuable thing for me to learn Thank for you. the future. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've helped other people in that same way. Yes, and, and if people understand how the passing is, then they don't feel guilty because m most of us feel very guilty that in fact, we are very powerful. We can just take an animal down mm -hmm. and have it put to sleep, as we call it. Um, so, so and, and lots of times it's so appropriate because they're in pain. They need to be released from the body that isn't working anymore. Mm -hmm. The bodies are vehicles. We come into many vehicles, whether we're humans or we're animals. The animals can come in and come out of these vehicles very easily. I mean, oh. when it gets too painful, when it gets too uncomfortable, they just, I'm out of here. And you hear them say, I'm out of here. <laughs> well, you know, that's and good they to pop know, they, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They pop right out. And you can hear them as they go, I'm free, I'm <laughs> free. But the energy still remains. Now, how does that work technically? I don't know. It's metaphysics. And <clears throat> I just know that it is. I know uh, by many experiences about how the animals are back with us. You, we, the owners can feel the energy. I tell them just shut their eyes huh. and they can feel that animal right there. We are so physical and we are so visual that when we don't feel it and we don't see it, it must not exist. Mm, yes, and isn't yet, that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, but it does exist. It's just in another form. Mm -hmm. And many times, you know, the animals will, the arrow story that's in my book, this a follow-up story on that was, she was at a crossroads, what do I do, I'm not sure. And she looked up in the beautiful sky, and she saw this great big arrow made out of a cloud, and right in front of it was a running horse. Just so magical. It's like, I'm with you not to worry. So the owner looked up in the sky, is that what you're saying? Exactly, mm -hmm. and she saw the cloud formation in an arrow. Oh, yes. 
and a running horse before it. I mean, yes. it's just the universe works in such magical All ways. All we need to do is open our minds and let go of those limiting beliefs, and we can get those beautiful messages mm -hmm. like that. They're so comforting. They really are. And if, if people know that the animal is it has left out of a body that doesn't work any longer. Mm -hmm. It's it's freeing. It's a gift. We can give them the gift gift of death. It is a gift, and then they can have the gift of a new life. Yes. However they want it, they could come back to the family again. And there's a process that people can go out with intent, and and retrieve mm -hmm. that part of that energy. That you know, the one that we love, like your Paca, yes. part of that energy can come back. Not necessarily a cookie cutter, not uh -huh. identical to how it, he was, but similar because the soul is always evolving and adding new experiences to the dowry, to mm -hmm. this wonderful basket of experiences that, that we take through these many lifetimes if we so believe on the many lifetimes. Yes, I, I'm a metaphysician and I have so many friends who are as well and each of us has just this unique connection to our own animals. It's a psychic connect connection and um, the love that exists between us and our animals is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It really is beautiful. It's a dance. One thing that we talked about earlier mm -hmm. uh, that I'd like uh, your help with. Sure. One of my two cats, Alex, has had a health problem that I mentioned to you this past year. It's been a recurring problem. And I wondered if you'd try to connect with him to give me, to get some information about what is causing this particular problem. I don't know if you need me to say what it is. No. And what Maybe what I can do to help okay. alleviate it or eliminate it. Um, you had mentioned before that it was a, a bladder type uh, of infection. Urinary, urinary kind of irritation, yeah. Okay, so um, as I feel Alex, um, certainly um, Alex is, uh, as I feel it, very quiet, very stoic. Um, can also be demonstrative at times as yes. well, um, but he, he again he chooses. But um, and the word comes chronic. This is this is this is chronic with him. What goes on? Um, I'm feeling bladder. Could be a kidney involvement as well. Um, He needs something to kick it out, something pretty strong to to move this discomfort, this dis-ease in his body out. Mm -hmm. Have you used any of the... Well, initially when he got this biotics. problem, I took him to the vet because I had a couple of homeopathic vet books at home mm -hmm. and I saw that the symptoms could indicate a very serious condition so I took him to the vet the vet put him on a uh, couple of pills an antibiotic and I believe a steroid or cortisone based thing uh, on two separate occasions uh, Alex went through this period of 10 days each taking these pills and then I thought after when this condition came back again a few months later, I thought, well, I'll try alternatives to this. Changing his diet, maybe giving him some homeopathic treatments. And that seemed to help, but just recently, within the last couple of days, he's come down with these same symptoms. I'm feeling it's more kidney than actually a bladder type of thing. Is a kidney involvement here that's going on and uh, sometimes we can do things homeopathic but sometimes homeopathic takes sometimes weeks and so that's why it's nice to have the veterinarian there where you can get something to relieve the discomfort and then move into the homeopathic to build up that organ to support it more so when you're off the medicine 
it's more supported. Do you, do you see it's, it's like almost yeah. like it works better if, if we, in some cases, use both. Okay. And um, I feel uh, it keeps coming chronic, uh, as you say, and it's, um, and I, and I s more see the kidneys than um, a, a normal bladder infection. It might even be um, a kidney disease of some kind. Mm. I can tell that he has pain with it when he uses his litter box. He has some pain. And, and he b goes to the litter box all the time, thinking he has to urinate yeah. all the time. And that, as we know, is always the, a bit of a symptom of a cystitis mm -hmm. that, uh, that can be very painful. Yeah. And, and um, if not stopped immediately, gets progressively worse and progressively painful. Yeah. So um, I think my first line of attack would be to to alleviate the pain and any discomfort there is, and then and then find one of your better holistic um, book reference books that you like to use, mm -hmm. even even for people, it's just fine, and and seek out. Uh, and I would look for a kidney involvement here as well. Okay, that's helpful. And I do have another vet that I've used in the past who is a homeopathic vet in my area, so perhaps I'll take Alex to visit him. And maybe with a combination of treatments we mm -hmm. can get our handle on this problem. Right. You know, I, I feel like it's going to be however for him. Some of us, some of us people, animals, have a weakness in our body where something always seems to get it. We have a sore back or yeah. you know, bone spurs in our foot, whatever it might be, there's some kind of a weakness there. And as I feel it, that's his Achilles tendon. That's his weak spot mm -hmm. for him. And so he would need a lot of um, support, nutritional support in that area. Um, however, okay. that, however you know. research that out. And um, because I, I feel like he, he's, the bladder is also involved here because of the pain and, okay. and the frequency and, and, you know, the sensation that's there. But um, um, I, would move, I would move in that direction. Okay, I appreciate that. A few months ago, I had a consultation with one of my other unseen friends named Eleanor. Um, and in the agenda of topics that I talked to Eleanor, about that particular day, I mentioned Alex and the problem that he had. And she said that, well, as you know, Barbara, uh, and I know, animals provide a service for us out of love. And what Alex does for me out of love, what he chose to do before it came in to my life, was to help process emotions that I've suppressed that I wasn't dealing with. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways of processing those emotions for me, taking them on in that way, was uh, however he does that, and it helped to create this bladder or this urinary problem initially. Well, when I heard what Eleanor had to say about that, I was certainly more mindful about doing my own metaphysical processing on my own, and a lot more than I had been, more conscientiously. But maybe Alex's condition got a foothold, and you know, back then, and and so it hasn't really. Uh, totally gone away and maybe that's why I need to address it in the ways that you've suggested. And, and certainly so. We, the animals will, in, in love, yes. take on our ailments, but they don't know how to slough them off. So yeah. they take them on and they get my, stuck with my them. My understanding is it's more of taking on the processing of emotions that we haven't done those suppressed emotions that we all have. Absolutely. Not only from <laughs> our present lifetime, but from past lifetimes. And uh, out of love, the animals will help us process what we're not actively processing. So. Very, 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 very true. Mm -hmm. And the cats are emotional healers. 
Yes. Where the dogs are physical healers. Oh, talk more about that. The, and the, the cats themselves will help us in our emotional level. They hang out, as, as I've been told, between the third and the fourth dimension, a little higher dimension than we do when they go to sleep. They just kind of hang out, or when we do our meditations, they're right there in the middle, just absorbing that energy in those dimensions that we're bringing in. Where the dogs, um, uh, not all, but some, take on our physical ailments. Oh. And if you find a lot of times the owner and the animal have the same ailment. <sighs> People just can't understand how does that happen, but the animals, they do. And so in the wild, an animal will be hard pressed to be sick. But oh. here, they do that. Now, we shouldn't go off going, oh my God, it's my fault that, that uh, my beloved little tiger has a, an right. ailment because it was mine and they took it. Yeah, don't go don't, to that don't guilt go there. place. Mm -hmm. That doesn't serve anybody. No, mm -hmm. it's just to know that, that it's all, everything is done in love. Yes. And, and they can work through it with your help in facilitating it. And to keep reminding ourselves that while life and living in the physical plane is precious and it's a gift, we have many lives and in beyond the physical where there is no time and space mm -hmm. things go, you know happen like that and so um, I have to keep reminding myself about that as well exactly and and so as the animal evolves into another dimension as we talked about before you know what does it look like what happens to them they're free Yes. And, but that energy remains with us. It can be on the back of our chair, sitting at our feet. You might even find a ball that just accidentally, somehow I never saw that there. How did it get there? Yeah. And they, they do those things to remind us that they're still there. Don't feel bad. They're fine. It's just that they have changed form. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times that helps people to know that they've actually given them the gift of release, the gift that, yes. that they couldn't give themselves. And, and they're moving on, they're evolving more. And lots of times I will talk to my clients and maybe ex tell them about the, n the other one coming in as part of the one that just left mm -hmm. and how that's gonna be. They'll be different, they might be more active and, and you know, uh, give you a little few more challenges but <laughs> it's always evolving yes and that again is a, a great gift for any animal lover to to hear and mm -hmm. to let in um, it helps make that difficult time easier when you have to let go and, and understand that the animal is moving on and it's a natural part of living exactly now, Barbara, I know that you also have begun communicating with humans. Am I? Yes, that's true. I've explained a little bit about well, that. Well, um, it's by popular de demand, actually. People would say, you're so, um, you, you give me a lot of information about my animals. Do you do people? And so I have expanded my service into doing readings for people. But I find that the people that are coming to me are people who are doing major life changes. And they're looking for direction. They're looking to, when they put their foot down, where is that stepping stone going to be? What is it going to look like? And so I try to give them an overview of, you know, how it would be to be back on their path. What, what would that path be for them? And, and try to give them some, some guidance, some courage. Mm -hmm. to move through that as well. But my first love is my animal reading. <laughs> and you are so good at it. Thank Cheryl. you. That's why you've gathered so many people <laughs> who, uh, who use your services in that way. I know. Thank and, you. Um, Sometimes we find lost animals. Oh, how wonderful that which, is. Yeah, which it, it is a little bit more difficult because sometimes I'm looking through their eyes or sometimes I'm trying to identify the terrain that I might see them in so the owner might go in that particular spot and find them. Sometimes they return and sometimes sadly they don't, but it's, 
I wish they would all return, but it, it sometimes it's just the experience that that's how it is. Yes, that's what they chose. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned earlier, often they can return in a different form in a different life. And uh, what I've come to learn more and more is that love never dies and that connection of love, whether it's with another human being or with an animal, never, never dies. And, and that's interesting because I had a lady call me and we did a, a session and she said, you know, I saw this ad in the paper for a bird and the price kept coming down at this pet shop so finally the price was a good price and I thought oh, I'm going to go get that bird. And she asked them to keep the bird and she walked in the pet shop and she saw this bird and she started to cry. And in fact this bird was from a prior lifetime. She didn't even know that was the bird that she would be buying or purchasing, but it actually was. And so she felt that connection from before. So she called and said, do other people do this? As, do other people experience it when they see an animal, they could be get tears in their eyes? And yes, they do. When, they're, when they're, the souls are meeting again yes. from a past, it, the connection is so deep and so wonderful, it just, you can feel that it brings tears to your eyes. I know a lot of human relationships that have started with that same <laughs> connection. Who knows why, but it's like a magnetic pull. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, this is a fascinating subject. We could talk on and on, but unfortunately, time is running out for this show. But I do want to have you on again, Barbara, maybe sometime in the, the new year that's coming up. And... Uh, I want to thank you so much oh, thank you. for sharing your beautiful stories and for tapping into Alex and uh, what's going on with him. I'll certainly be able to use that, I'm sure. And I want to thank the audience. And for now, say goodbye until the next time.